five. Ah, oh, you didn't sleep at all last night, did you? No. I'll just sleep today. There's nothing else to do in here. How did you get here so early? Cut her. Pull some strings. For the past few weeks, all you've been doing is looking after me. You gotta start taking care of yourself. I am fine. Are you? Mm-hmm. Really. Well, it must have been really nice being back in your own bed in the boarding house last night. I really wouldn't know about that, Gabrielle. I was right here in the waiting room. They got this really big chair in there. Well, you see, that's what I mean. I'm gonna be there, Gabriella, every night until you get out of here. Whoa, oh, 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 sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. You okay? No, 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 sorry. Yes, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah, do you know if that uh, pharmacy on, uh, on Main Street is open this early? I have to pick up a prescription for the kids. What, you want me to go get it? I can pick it up. No, no, I could just have it delivered. Uh, do you need a ride to work? No, I'm not going into work. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna work here because uh, Peter's with Bridget and I have a headache. Oh, oh, I see you have a headache. You know, I, uh, I stopped by your room late last night after I got back from the party, and, uh, <laughs> you weren't there. I mean, I knocked on the door to say goodnight and all that. Uh, I'm just wondering what happened. Did, uh, did I lose you at the party, or, 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 or what was it, huh? No, there were just a lot of people at the party, and I got swallowed up in the crowd. Swallowed up in the crowd, yeah. Okay, well, I guess that must have been it then, huh? That's it. Yeah, okay, well, whatever. I'll see you later. Wait a minute. Yeah? Don't worry, I'll look after the kids. Yeah, make sure they get their medicine, will you please? Uh, yeah. I told HP to do it, but they've got them wrapped around their fingers. Okay, Bye. see you. <sighs> be there, Matt, be there. Reardon Boarding House. Oh, hi. Oh, I was hoping so much you would answer. Yeah, lucky. Uh-oh. You're mad. Not really. Yes, you are. Look, I'm sorry. I really am sorry, and I tried very hard to get away last night, but I couldn't because I had so many obligations. And I did go to the roadhouse. By the time I got there, you were gone. And, um, I drove around a couple of hours looking for you. Well, it got late, you know. Look, I, uh... I promised Bridget I would help her out with some things around the house here today, so... Matt, it was just one of those crazy things. That's all. Look, I gotta run. Uh, am I gonna see you today? I don't know. my favorite. I wait every year just for those two to come out. <laughs> now it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. It'll take a lot more than a white beard and a red suit, Mom. Now, thank you. Come on. Look. These two belong together. I mean, how many years have they stuck it out? Him sliding down all those chimneys and her making all that food for those little elves and reindeer. Dad couldn't even handle one. Frankie, don't scrooge out on me. Sure, I miss them. Sure, I'm only sleeping at Joni's because I can't stand the thought of going up to our bedroom right now, but... But hey, look, right behind Christmas is a, a brand new year just waiting to be lived. Oh, come on, come No, it on. is. Listen, I have decided that that's what I'm going to give myself for Christmas. That's my present to me. A whole new life without Buzz. I feel good about it. I mean, I feel so good that if I knew where he and Jenna had run off to, I'd even send them a Christmas card. Today, the part of Elaine Cooper is being played by Wendy Catlett. Oh, well, it was in the van. Yeah. Nadine drove it home. Forgot it. Yeah. So, you found Jenna last night, right? Didn't work out. Not gonna. Well, then where are you going? I'll find someplace. 
I will tell Nadine that you... Not this time. I ducked a lot of things in my life. But not this one. This portion of Guiding Light. Watch CBS This Morning. It's breakfast for your head. I don't ever want to talk about Buzz again. In fact, I don't care if I ever lay eyes on him again. Well, you know... You've got a hell of a lot of nerves showing up after what you did last night. Publicly humiliating Mom and the rest of the family. You know that? Hey, listen, Dad, Frankie, I'm talking to Frankie. you. Frankie! Look, I want to hear all about it, but I want to hear it from your father. Mom, has he heard you? Doesn't he hurt you enough, huh? Mom! Frankie, I want everybody else out of this room. Would you please take these customers out? I'm sorry, folks, but uh, would you please leave? Uh, everything will be on the house. Uh... Look, I'm sorry. You have to go. Just sat down. I, I know that. We'll, we'll, we'll pick up the check and we'll get the next meal too. Next time you're back. Okay. I, I'm speculous. Apologize. Chasing after Jenna. When you left me, I thought sure you were headed straight into her arms. Oh, dear. Well, I suppose we don't need any reminder from last night, do we, darling? Ross. Baby. Honey. Talk to me, please. I know you're adorable when you're angry, but if you stop, I'll make you a big breakfast. <laughs> Okay, fine. Then my expertise, I'll, I'll rub your back all morning. All day. Oh. oh, please, give me a break here, Ross. Two other people sign those damn papers of Alan's. If you're gonna be mad at somebody, why don't you be mad at Vanessa or Alex? Because I'm not married to either one of them, am I? Fine, I guess I just have to go smell Alan's flowers, then. No, you come back here, young lady. Why, are you gonna forgive me? Not until you can explain how my own wife could keep something that important from me. I mean, how could you? Without even discussing it. How could you give Alan Spaulding all that power? like you didn't hear that. You've heard the saying about getting up on the wrong side of the bed. Well, that's me. I got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. You can take my car, son. Take mine. Go ahead. Take them both. Now, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call Butch. I'm going to get his tow truck over here, get him to get that thing out of my driveway right now. All right, kids, you want a story? Yeah. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Come on, let's go to the kitchen and get some hot chocolate first, huh? Okay. Come, on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. No, no! I hate voicemail! I have an idea. 
Why don't I go to the office and you stay here? No, I wouldn't want to do that to the children. I fully intend to stay in a bad mood all day. What about you? What happened to your headache? I still have my headache. Really? Well, you know, maybe we should stop for just a second and talk about this headache, okay? Does he have a name? Hey, Bridget. Took care of the uh, bathroom door for you. The hinges are all right. I'll, I'll do the rest of the stuff later. Right now, there's something else I got to go and uh, finish. Boy, you are really becoming a royal pain in the you-know-what. Since when do you have the right to turn around and interrogate me about my private life? Or is it only because you don't have one? Oh, it's absolutely because I don't have one. I've been a little dull and dreary these days, not to mention sleepy and dopey and doc. I didn't say it. Well, you don't have to say it, Vanessa. I know what I am, all right? I'm a single father who lives at home with his ex-sister-in-law and helps well, her out with so a family what? business. So bad about Every that. day is like the one before and the one after it. Filled with work and obligations, and yet somehow, at least you seem to think I should find the time during all of this to have a toward love affair. I didn't say that. Yeah, well... I didn't. I, all I've said is that you seem a trifle irritable. And I thought it was maybe because you were lonely. That's all. Well, you know, it wasn't that long ago that you were a little bit lonely yourself. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, things started to change for you a little bit when? Uh, during the summer, was that it? Ooh, 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 now you're starting to imagine things. No, I'm not imagining things, Vanessa. Do you, do you remember when I came to your room about a month ago, one day, you wouldn't let me in because you claimed you had a cramp in your foot? Excuse me? I mean, I, I, I kind of got the impression you might have somebody in your room that day. Now, it's fine. I'm not passing judgment on you. You're an adult. You're divorced. You're free. You can do whatever you want. But don't try to tell me that I don't see what I see or hear what I hear in this house. And what's the deal with this guy? Why are you keeping him such a secret? Uh, uh, These were just delivered, Vanessa, darling. I, I think they're for you. Oh, good. Look. They're so beautiful. A card. Why don't we see who it's from, huh? How could my own wife keep something so important from me? Well, let me ask you something, pal. How could my own husband keep secrets from me? I didn't. Ha! You knew that Alan needed my signature long before I did. Why didn't you tell me I was one of his trustees? Faulty argument. You can't ask a question to answer a question. No. It's the pot calling the kettle black. Well, we're not talking about pots and pans now, are we, dear? We're talking about open communication between a husband and wife. Exactly. My father told me, not my husband. Yeah, well, I'm not trying to make myself out to be the hero. Well, you're this. not. Not this way, at least. You're a hero in other ways. Blank, the only reason that I didn't tell you was that if I... If you say it was for my own good, I swear I'm going to tickle your feet till you scream from me. No, don't you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, I'm a very big girl now. No, oh, honey, I think you're about the right size. No, you're not taking me seriously. What gives you that idea? I think you should be very proud of the fact that I can make decisions on my own. I am, love, very proud of you. No, you listen to me, Ross Marler. All on your own, you made the decision to quit Spalding as their general counsel just to get Alexandra out of your hair. Well, all I did was sign those papers for Alan to get him out of our life. Besides, I really think he's dying, which changes everything. Now, you listen to me. Never underestimate Alan Spaulding. And with your signatures, you three ladies may have created a monster. I don't want to leave Mom out there in the with him. Oh, Frankie, come on. After what we went through this past year, we both should have learned that when there's something wrong between a husband and wife, oh, other people should stay out of it. Look, look, I know you're right. But damn it, Dad's wrong here. I thought by now you'd be living your fantasy, Buzz. You and Jenna together, Nadine, happy Nadine. forever. Nadine. No, not happy, we're, delirious we're, now that you're going to have... Jenna and I aren't going to have a life together. We're not going to have anything else. She's gone. She left Springfield for good. She left? Before you had a chance to tell her about how I erased the videotape, right? No, I, I caught up to her at the airport. She said she didn't want to have anything to do with me. She said that? Well, she said she wanted somebody else, something, not me. Uh, what she said exactly was, uh, goodbye. 
Is that all she said? <laughs> Why, well, yeah. After that, is there anything else? I mean... No. So she finally left. I didn't come here to talk about her. I come here to tell you how sorry I am for walking out on you at the motel room. No, Buzz. You didn't walk out on me. You ran. You are unbelievable. You left me in some dump in the middle of nowhere to go chasing after Jenna, and now that she's told you that she doesn't want you, you think you can just come back here to the same stupid fool who always takes your back? How low can you go? Take their medicine. Find out today at 5. Did you really think that I would just open my arms and welcome you back like I always have before? Just tell me something, Buzz. Please tell me. What is it about me that makes you think you can always walk all over me just like a doormat? Please tell me. I don't know. I need to know this. Please. Is it because that no matter how lousy you act or how badly you treat me, I always forgive you? Is that it? And why is that? Please tell me. Why am I still so connected to you after all this time and everything that you've done? Please tell me. I, I don't know. No, I take that back. Maybe I do know. Do you remember the night when you told me how you won your medal? I remember thinking that night that I would never love anybody more than I loved you because that night... You gave me more of yourself than you've ever given anybody else before in your whole life. Because you told me a secret that you've never told anyone. Because you said that I was so special to you. You know, it's funny, isn't it? I mean, sad funny. That I always knew I could... I could take you sleeping with somebody else. Better than I could ever take you telling somebody else's story. You gotta tell me the truth now, Buzz. Did you ever tell Jenna how you won the Silver Star? Yeah, I told her. You are a real bastard. Yeah, no, right, right. No, it's, 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 a, it's fine, I heard you. Thanks for the information. Sure, yeah, I owe you. Ah, good morning. Good morning, Sid. Is David here? No, I haven't seen him. He never went home last night. Oh, so you're out tracking him down. Yes, and you. Gives me an excuse to see you. Look, I know how hard you've been working for Gabriella, and David appreciates it. I also know that this is a far cry from the work you've been doing for Alan Spaulding. I mean, after all, that is your golden ring, not some pro bono case. And Gabriella certainly can't afford to pay you. Julie, I don't do what I do just for the money. Well, I know. I know. I, look, I don't deny that I do get off work for Spaulding, right? And all those perks that come along with it. But I'm telling you, this case right here, it just does something for me that I don't think the big man could ever do. Yeah, it reminds me of a little promise I made to myself, that I would never, ever sell out. So you do these pro bono cases for the same reason, that you live in your old neighborhood, even though you could afford to live in a better part of town? Yeah, because I think that people who forget where they come from, they're in danger of forgetting who they are. You got to remember all of it. Yeah, that's what makes you who you are. I can't believe the way those guys like to shove people around down there. See, they just kicked me out of the jail wing. Right. And David, you know, you're lucky that they let you in there as much as they have. And I would like to kick you home and tuck you into bed. You look exhausted. Right. And when was the last time you had a decent meal? Let's just stop fussing over me, okay, Jilly? Say, see it. Did you get them to drop the charges against Gabriella? Because just reducing because, the man is not going to... Because she cooperated fully and she agreed to testify if needed. 
The DA is willing to drop all the charges. Oh, man, that's great. All right, but hear me out. All the charges related to her uncle yes. and the hijacking, that's terrific. the damage that's at the construction excellent. site, uh, the attack on Dylan. This is sensational. Did... Sid, wait till Gabriella hears. I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you. Then, will you slow down and let me finish? Those charges have been dropped. All right. Another one's been added. Uh-oh. Now, do you know where Gabriella came from? Yeah, Costa Rica. Uh, her rat uncle brought her here. Mm -hmm. Well, her uncle showed up without the proper papers. That means that Gabriella, she's here illegally, too. Now, the INS have entered the case. They want to deport her. David, they want to send her back to her own country. Uh, where would you like these? Anywhere. Up here, H.B. Thank you. Oh, my All right, kids, I know the aquarium. Ice cream, the whole business. Kids, kids, they give me a good case of heartburn. They get healthier by the minute. What do you say, son? Do we go and do something? No, you don't. You guys told me you were sick earlier. I want you to stay home, all right? Now go have some breakfast with your granddaddy. You still feeling bad, daddy? Yes. No, I'm not. I'm fine. Okay, back to the kitchen. Mush. I love you guys. Mush. Well, we still don't know who the flowers are from. Are you going to open the card? Okay. Now, Josh, why don't you open my card? No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm harping on this. I don't know why I'm giving you such a hard time. It's your life. I shouldn't be poking my nose into it. I only hope and pray that this, does, this doesn't mean that you're not going to loan me your, your car. I hereby loan you my car. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. OK. Have a good day. Thanks. <laughs> okay. You're welcome, Alan. What? I'm so glad you came by. I was, I was hoping that you would. You alone? <laughs> no, not now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about last night. Can you forgive me? Actually, I want to thank you. You made me take a look at a few things that I didn't want to see. It's not going to work. What happened last night? I saw the guy I used to be. I was the guy I used to be. Beer in my hand, a pretty girl giving me the eye from across the room, not a care in the world. Oh. But it didn't seem to matter anymore. Something changed me. You. Suddenly I want, I want more in my life. I, I need more. And I don't think I'm gonna find it. I, hanging out at roadhouses and backwoods country cabins waiting for you. But I don't want that for you. I'm not, I'm not blaming anybody here. I, it's, it's just the way it is. Is there anything else? Gee, that's funny. I mean, I really like the person that I've become since I met you. I mean, not completely, you know. I, I know that I haven't figured out a way for us to really be together in the world, but, um... Just down. Please. Yeah, sure. 
You know, you really did wake me up and make me feel alive again. And now, in the mornings when I get up, I feel happy because I think that I'm going to see you. Maybe just even talk to you on the phone. I'm a divorced woman with two children. But in my heart, I feel brand new. Oh, maybe I'm not saying it right. Maybe I... Well, let me try it this way. Upstairs in my bedroom, I have a big chest of drawers, and it's just all full of these beautiful nightgowns and these gorgeous pieces of lingerie. And I don't wear them anymore because I don't even want to, you know. I just never in my life have felt free. And I do now. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Yeah. Well? It just doesn't seem to matter anymore. So you're telling me if Alan gets the tie-breaking vote at the next board meeting, he becomes the next Spalding president? Yes. Or somebody that he appoints. Mm. Don't you dare start defending Alan Michael to me. They're right? two different people, Ross. And quite frankly, I would much prefer if Alan Michael were at the head of the helm than Nick. All the more reason to give power to Alan. It simply doesn't matter. A Spalding is a Spalding is a Spalding. And all they want out of life is to use somebody to get more. More? I like more. More? More is mine. I want more. Mm. Don't you be fooling around, young lady. This is very serious. And I can be a very serious person. Mm. Did I tell you that? Frank said we didn't have to come into the office early because he had other things to do, other places. No, you didn't tell me. Mm -mm. Young lady, what mm -hmm. do you think you're doing? What do you think I'm doing, Ross? Committing a misdemeanor, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not have an office to go to, but I do. Mm-hmm. Blake? Yes? Please. Do you want me to stop? I'll stop if you want me to stop. Now, David, I know I went through those pretty quickly, but those are the legal options available to her. But she can get her citizenship. Well, yeah, but that way takes time and money, and frankly, Gabriella has none of the first and very little of the latter. Now, are there any more questions? David? Are you chilly? No. No, he needs me. He really cares for that girl. I really think he needs to get over her. My brother doesn't get over people just that easily. I would think you'd understand that. And why do you say that? From what I've seen of you, I think you're the same kind of man. When you left me in that awful motel room, no, excuse me, abandoned me, didn't you know that was the worst thing that you could do to me? I mean, it's the worst thing that any human being can do to another human being. Because when the person that you love and depend on abandons you and just disappears from your life, you blame yourself. Because you don't really understand why. And then you keep waiting for it to happen again. I mean, you set yourself up for it. You blame yourself if it happens again, and then you blame yourself if it doesn't. See, and that's what happened with you, Buzz, twice. One minute, the one person that I loved in all the world and the person who loved me and made me feel safe and warm and secure and special was there, and then in a split second, you were gone. Just like that. But you know something? I'm really glad it finally happened. Because I think, I think it was a real turning point for me. I think I finally grew up. I realized that I didn't need you to lose myself in. I didn't need anybody or else I would never be able to be myself, the real me. And now you coming back here like this, this is a turning point too. I don't expect you to forgive me, Dean. Oh, well, that's... 
Don't you know by now that forgiving you is the easiest thing in the world for me? I mean, it comes as naturally to me as breathing. I mean, it's always been like that. It's... <laughs> Ever since I can remember. I think it was all those songs that we were raised on, you know, the stuff like, uh, ain't no mountain high enough and I will follow him wherever he may go. You see, because that's what I thought was true love. I mean, I thought it was a good thing. I didn't think it was a bad thing. I thought it was true love. And for anything like true love, I would, I would, I would do anything you needed. In all those years that you were gone, I thought that was true love. I mean, it was easy. It was like, um, I had met the missing half of me when I met you. It was like there was some kind of chromosome or something inside of me. And it screamed out to me that you had one that matched it, you see, and, and, and I would not be able to live or breathe or love if, if I didn't have you in my life. I mean, I had to have this particular man to make me whole. And I believe that. I believe that in all the years that you were gone, and I believed it when you came back, and I believed it right up until the time that you just left the last time. And then you want to know what happened? Then something hit me like a ton of bricks. Because I started to realize all those things that all those other women had been talking about all those years, about, um, I don't know, stuff like independence and self-esteem and how you shouldn't let some creep walk all over you and take you for granted. All of a sudden, it dawned on me that maybe all that talk had something to do with me, too. Dini, it has everything to do with you. Yeah, well, I know that now, Buzz, and I don't need you or anybody else to tell me. And you want to know when I found out? I found out the night that I drove home after you dumped me. And I walked in here, and, and Carol was here. And he lit up like a Christmas tree when he saw me. You want to know what he said? He said, are you all right, Nadine? Is there anything that I can do to make it better? And he meant it. He really cared about me. Now, I'm not saying that you don't care now or that you never cared before, but it's a funny thing with you, Buzz. I mean, you, you never just thought about the other person. You're always thinking about yourself. Even when you were being generous, it was never just about the other person. It was always about Buzz Cooper, too. I mean, I've known this about you my whole life, and, and I was never mad about it until just now. And you want to know a secret? All the times that we were married and went to bed together, do you want to know something? I wore makeup to bed because I thought that you wouldn't think that I was pretty enough in bed without it. Dee. Now, see, now, wait, I know what you're going to say, that I didn't need it. But you see, that's not the point, Buzz. That's not the point. The point is, that's how bad I felt about the situation. That's how insecure I felt about us. I thought that you wouldn't want me. I felt like, I don't know, I just didn't have any faith in, in our love. You see, and that's no way to be in a relationship. I mean, it just can't go on like that. Now, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this. I mean, I don't even know if I can because of that damn chromosome thing. And I already feel like half of me is being ripped out, but... It can't go on like this, Buzz. You gotta go. Okay, fine. I mean, if you don't want us to see each other anymore, just say That's it. That's not what I want. Well. Vanessa, we can wish and dream and think all we want. My grandmother used to have a saying, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. Oh. I'm not a beggar. I, I see something I want, I go after it, I work hard, I get it. I Oh, I know that about you. I can't do that with you. We well, don't have to. I mean, I'm already yours. I want to give you things. I want to take you places. I want a place of our own that we can go to. And, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. We don't have that. No, we don't. Well, I don't care. Let's just let's just run away together someplace. We can't. Well, let's just. 
go someplace. We tried. Well, I can't say goodbye. Well, then I'll say it for us. I just saw your lawyer, Sid Dickerson. What did he say? Well, he said that all the criminal charges against you have been dropped. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah, really. Well, then I can get out of here and go back to the boarding house with you. When? Actually, Gabriella, there's another problem. It seems that Sid's found out something else about you. Immigration. I can't go back to my country, David. You don't know what it was like for me there after my parents died. I'm scared. Hey, you won't have to go back there, Gabrielle, I promise you. When you get released out of here, I'll make sure of it that you stay in Springfield with me. Hey. I guess that's it then. Yeah, I guess. I guess it's just like the old man said, that's all she wrote. Buzz, stay in touch with the baby, okay? She's gonna miss you. I'll miss her. I'll miss. Don't say it. Don't have to. You know what I'm gonna say before I say it, right? <sighs> Bye, Buzz. I go out the back way. Dini. Even without the mascara, I would have loved you. strong one. I think your mother is always was, Frank. Buzz, can I ask you one question? Oh, yeah. So, you know that story about the Silver Star? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know the story, but did you really tell Jenna? Nah. Only one I ever told was Nadine. Will I see you soon? Yeah, soon. Don't worry about goodbye, sir. Okay. Take care. You got the mail? Oh. Anything interesting in there? Uh, no. Eating action gives you virtually spotless dishes every time. This has been Guiding Light. Belts by Clara Studio for Asymmetry.
Deceiving Alex was Roger's first mistake. Getting caught was his second, and Alex is planning for him to make his third and final mistake tomorrow on Guiding Light. And, Jill, it's the opportunity of a lifetime, an offer you cannot refuse. And if you think it's too good to be true, it is. Wake up, girlfriend. You've only got a Y&R minute tomorrow on The Young and the Restless. <laughs>